Glory to you, my King. We worship you, Lord. We magnify you, Lord. Hallelujah. If you came here to see Pastor Jason Opendo, you're confused. This is the house of God. We come to give God praise in this house. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Let's get, let's get right into this thing. Amen? Amen. Praise God. We are going to continue last week's message, The Voice in Your Heart, Part 2. Amen? There was too much steak and potatoes that I didn't get into to go on to a new message. Amen? We got we to gotta run this one back. Praise God. I'm going to ask everybody to open your word to the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 9. The book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 9. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask everyone to stand for the reading of God's word. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 16, verse 9. If you have it, let me know with a strong amen. amen. Praise God. We read the word of the Lord in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Dear Heavenly Father, I present to you, Lord Father, Christ-like Christian church. I present to you every individual under the sound of my voice. So many times, Lord Father, we as individuals and human beings, we plan our life. We plan our way, Lord Father. And a lot of times we run into brick walls, Daddy God, because you desire for our life to be lived in you. I ask you that as we bring forth this word, that you minister to every soul in this place and those that are watching online. I ask you that you illuminate the minds of men and women alike, Lord Father, to understand that there will be a battlefield in our minds. Hallelujah. And the only way, Lord Father, to win the wars of life are to walk in every war with you by our side. Amen. I ask you, Lord Father, to bless every person under the sound of my voice. I ask you to not allow them to just hear your word, but allow them to receive your word and give them the vision of how to apply that word to their everyday life. I thank you for what you're doing in CCC. I thank you for what you've already done. And I thank you in advance for everything that I know and I'm fully persuaded of that you're going to do. I pray these things, Daddy God. In the mighty name of my Lord and Savior, the love of my life, Jesus Christ, amen. amen. You may be seated, but don't let your praise be seated, amen. amen. Come on. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. The voice in your heart. As we spoke about last week, the organ that pumps blood, it is not the heart that the word of God is speaking of, amen? The word heart in Hebrew means the mind. Proverbs 16, 9 says, the heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. A lot of times folks go through life not understanding who they are. Not understanding that they've been chosen by God for an assignment here on this earth. And because there is an assignment over your life on this earth 
every path that you attempt to take in life, for whatever reason, doesn't work out. You end up running into speed bumps, roadblocks, brick walls. You end up experiencing failure and shortcomings and dissatisfaction. And sometimes you get down on yourself and don't understand, but my plans are good and, and I desire good things and I want to provide a life for my children and I, I want to provide a good atmosphere and environment and, and a stable financial place for my family. But what you don't get is that there's already a divine plan in place for each and every one of you. God has created you with a purpose that you cannot see many times. And unfortunately, running into brick walls and being broken by life is the only way that some of you are going to call upon the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Psalms 37, 23, and 24, it says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. It says, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholdeth him in his way. Some of you have a mean bounce back game. You fall and fall and fall some more. But there's a resilience about you. And sometimes you want to pat yourself on the back and give yourself credit for this resiliency that, that comes upon you and this, this mentality and this attitude of, I can't stay down here at rock bottom. I got to get back up. I got to work my way back up. And you tend to pat yourself on the back. But the reality is that God made you with that bounce back game because he has a plan for your tomorrows in Jesus Christ. Romans 8, 6, it says, for to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. There are so many human beings walking this earth that have set their mind on the flesh, set their mind on careers, set their mind on financial gain, set their mind on a specific someone who, who they are intrigued by or they love dearly. If you are living life without Jesus Christ, you have set your mind on the flesh. My Bible is telling me that when you do this, you are literally living as a dead man walking. Your life is only going to amount to so much on this earth because the reality is this is a temporary place and there will be an afterlife. Amen. The scripture goes on to say, but to set the mind on the spirit, the Holy Spirit. It says, it is life and peace. I don't know about the younger generation. I can only speak for those that are in their 40s. But once you hit a certain age, there's something about peace that you just can't live without. There's something about peace that once you've gone through the trials and tribulations of life, it doesn't matter who it is, they cannot compromise your peace. Amen. It doesn't matter if it's a real close friend that you grew up with. It doesn't matter if it is a family member that carries your same blood. If they are compromising your peace, once you hit a certain age, you realize my peace is more important than the relationship. 
the Bible says to set your mind on the spirit of God yes. is peace and life. If you are lacking peace in your life, you might have to ask yourself, what are your thoughts like? What have you set your sights on? Where are you putting your energy and your focus? Because when you put your energy and your focus and your time on the things of the Lord, that peace that the Bible describes, it begins to consume you. There are people that I'm supposed to have relationship with. You would assume that you have relationship with your siblings for your entire life. Truth be told, that's not my story. There was a time when, when they told Jesus that his mother was present. Jesus went on to say, my family, my brothers, my sisters, my mother, whatever family you want to call it, for me, are the ones who do the will of my Father. Amen. Praise the Lord. I've replaced my entire family, for the most part, with my spiritual family. Amen. Because although I love my carnal family, and I pray for them on a regular basis, I will not Compromise my eternity for no one. I want to spend time with those that are like-minded and have a desire to spend all eternity in heaven. Because when we say that our mission statement is heaven is the goal and nothing else matters, it's not just a catchphrase. Nothing else matters. Not this relationship. Not that career. Not this amount of money. Not this location. Amen. Not that person. Nothing else matters but Jesus Christ. Amen. It's got to be that serious. Yes, hallelujah. It's got to be that convicting to your heart. It's got to be that convicting to your heart. <laughs> The way you think genuinely matters in this life. On one occasion, there was this older woman, she was a Christian, and she called into a, a radio station because she was a poor older woman, and she had some needs in her life, and her cabinets were empty, and her refrigerator was empty, and she was struggling financially, barely able to get by. And she called into this radio station. And she made her request be known to the radio station and said, I need God to help me. I need, I need him to send me a blessing. A blessing whether it be financial for me to be able to get some food or whether it be food itself I need God to send me a blessing Hallelujah. there was a non-believer who was also listening to this radio program he calls in the radio program and he says there was just a woman saying that she needed a blessing in her life can you give me that woman's information because I want to meet that need? They gave this individual the lady's information, her name, her number, her address. He tells his secretary, I want you to go do a whole bunch of grocery shopping and fill up bags and bags and bags and bags with a whole bunch of food. He says, but what I want you to do is when this woman asks you who sent her this blessing, I want you to tell her that it was Satan, the devil. When the secretary arrived at the woman's house, the 
woman was so happy and grateful for the help that she had received and she began grabbing the bags and boxes and putting the food packages inside of her small home. She didn't even ask who sent it. She wasn't interested on where they came from because her mind was already made up on where the things came from. The secretary puzzled at the fact that this woman was taking all these bags and taking all these boxes and didn't even ask the question, approaches the woman and says, do you even care to know who sent you the food? And she says, no, in reality, I genuinely don't care because when God places an order, even the devil obeys. You've got to set your mind on the things of the spirit. And when you do, you begin to see everything that happens in life as a God thing. Yes. Even the negative. Something negative occurs in your life. A lot of times you go to asking why, and why is this happening to me, and why is this tribulation, and, and why is this trial consuming me? That's the wrong question. It's 100% the wrong question. What needs to be asked by those that identify as believers is Abba Father. What do you want me to learn? from this situation yes. because here's the reality when you go through a trial and you don't learn the lesson that you were supposed to learn in the midst of that trial guess what there's another trial that's very similar that's coming your way Amen. so instead of repeating the same thing over and over stop take a step back Look at the situation with your carnal eyes for a minute and then put on your Holy Spirit eyes and say, what is it that God is trying to teach me in the midst of this trial and tribulation? Bring that storm into your prayer closet and I guarantee the God that controls the atmosphere will bring a peace in the midst of that storm, he's not going to take away the storm. You're going to have to go through it. You might get a little wet. You might feel a little pain. You might feel a little affliction. He's not going to take it away, but he's going to add a peace and an understanding that this is something that I have to go through. Maybe it's for me. Maybe it's for those behind me, but I got to get through this thing with Jesus. Come on, somebody. things above. Isaiah 26, 3. It says, you God, keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. I want you to listen to that one more time. It says, you God, keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. If you are lacking peace in your life, you need to ask yourself, what are your thoughts fixed on? What is consuming your mind? Where are you spending your time? Who are you spending your time with? If God is not upon a part of the, that equation of who you're spending your time with, of who you're thinking about, you better believe that trial after trial and tribulation after tribulation are not just going to come, but they're going to beat you down. Because as a believer, they're going to come anyway. But when you know that you have a God that's faithful, 
when you know that you have the spirit of God that is love and power living inside of you, you don't focus on the problem. You're constantly focused on the solution. And it gives you that peace that the scripture is talking about. You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts you. Praise the Lord. How many believers in the house do I have that trust the Lord? Y'all are clapping, and that's great. But trusting God looks like something. Yes. Trusting God is maintaining a good attitude when things are not so easy. Amen. Trusting God is maintaining a good attitude when you got more bills than you got money. Mm -hmm. Trusting God is maintaining a good attitude when that person that you love so much becomes your Judas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Trusting God looks like something. It's maintaining a good attitude when you have your heart set on something and your mind set on something and your desire set on something and God says no. Yes. Trusting God is not the easiest thing to do in the world that we live in that's flooded with demonic forces and a devil that wants to take you out. Yes. But if you Call yourself a believer, a praying believer, a Bible reading believer, a sacrificial fasting believer. You trust God in the midst of anything and everything because you understand that if God allowed it, you can go through it. Come on. Joshua 1 8. It says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Let's stop right there for a minute. How many of you are talking about God all day long? It's quiet in this church. Hallelujah. It's quiet in this church. Listen. It's challenging because you got so many years of being conditioned by the world. It's challenging to go throughout your days, 24-7 at the workplace, around family members, around friends, the beauty shop, the barber shop. It's challenging to keep the word of God steady on your lips. But it says, this book of the law shall not, and I repeat, shall not depart out of thy mouth. There's some people in this house that got to sanctify their words. There's some people in this house that got to start learning the word of God so they can speak the word of God. It says, but thou shall meditate therein day and night. It's telling you to consume all of your time, regardless to what you're doing, meditating, yes. pondering, thinking about, speaking about the word of God. And that's the problem. That a lot of times we want God to show up in certain situations, in certain circumstances, but we are not meditating on the word day and night. We want results, but we don't want to put in the work that it takes to get the results. Yes. Hallelujah. I've been going to the gym. I've put in four days this week. Praise God. I got to preserve my sexy. Yeah. Praise God. I'm getting old. But reality is that I can't expect to go to the gym in a week and have a six pack. That's not realistic. It's not realistic. I got to put in some work. Not only at the gym, but at home as well. Yes. I got to make sure that I'm eating a certain way to get the results.
results that I want. And here's the thing. There's a lot of believers that come to church and they get their praise on in the church because they want results, right? But then when they go home, they're not on that special Christian diet of praying, of reading the word, of fasting, of doing the things that believers do. And it's because you're not doing those things, you're not going to have your spiritual six pack. Come on, somebody. Reality. It's going to take work. Hard work works. You have to meditate on it all the day long. When distractions arise, because they will, you got to speak to that distraction about your God. You got to let your distractions know that yes, you are here and I acknowledge you, but I got something to tell you too. I'm going to distract your plan with my plan and my plan is the word of God. Come on somebody. I'm not telling you to give your life to Jesus Christ because everything's going to get better. No, I'm telling you to expect the storm. But I'm telling you that when that rain starts to fall, you open up a spiritual umbrella. That's the Holy Bible. And those scriptures will keep you from getting wet. Come on, somebody. Mm. Hallelujah. It says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Check yourself. It says, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Check yourself some more. It says that thou mayest observe. Listen to this. This is where people might not like me. It says that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Yes. Hold on. Hold on. Lock the door so nobody runs out of the church. <laughs> to do. Listen. I'm not just a believer. I'm not. I made up a word. I'm not just a believer. I'm a believer and doer of the word of God. So yeah. I'm not just a believer. I'm a do -ever. We got to become do -evers. Listen, it's different with God. You might be like, Jason, but that, past that word doesn't exist in the dictionary. Well, guess what? In mathematics, one plus one equals two, but to God, one plus one in marriage equals one. One plus one plus one with Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit equals one. God's ways are not our ways. I am a dweaver. I gotta make up a new vocabulary to maintain my spirituality, so be it. Praise God. It says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all. Oh my God, that's a big word. To all. There's so many Christians that operate in convenient Christianity. This scripture, I lied, so I'm going to apply it to my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm believing. Yeah, I'm a Christian. I live that verse. Yep. All of the word. All of the word. All of the word. You got to get into the book and learn all of the word so that you can be begin to apply what you like and what you don't like. You know why? Because what you don't like is what you need most. Boom. It says that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. Check this out. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Yes. I need you to hear me. Praise the Lord. We don't serve a God that just tells us what to do. We serve a God that when we obey what he tells us, there are rewards yes, and yes, promises God. that belong to you and you can claim them from all. Yes. 
So you might say, but it's so challenging to meditate day and night. But if you do, your way shall be prosperous and you shall have good success. So if your way is not prosperous, and if you're not experiencing good success in your life, there's a good possibility that a lot of the hours in your life are not being spent meditating on the word of God day and night. There's a good possibility that you are not applying all of the scriptures that are written in the book. There's a good possibility that you are not observing to do the things that the Bible says do. This is not, this is not for everybody. Although everybody's invited, this is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want you to understand that the devil, the devil is a deceiver. You're not going to see him coming all the time because he's going to disguise himself as something good. He might be a wolf in sheep's clothing sitting right next to you saying, Hallelujah, Amen, Pastor. Stay woke, church, because the devil is looking for whom he may devour in the church. He already got the lost. He's looking for you. Yeah. He's looking for you who's attempting to get it right. He's looking for you who's making changes in your life. He's looking for you who's praying on a regular basis. He's looking for you who now have begun to crack open the good book and read the pages therein. He's looking for you. So you have to be mindful of that for what? Here's the reality. When preparation meets with opportunity, it equals success. So if you're preparing yourself for a devil that you know is coming, you're going to have a successful fight in the midst of that battle because you were ready for it. Listen, as believers, you got to learn to enjoy and see the blessing of God in the right now. What do you mean, Pastor? give you a little story. I was in the prison system for four years and I had a table that I taught at seven days a week for an hour and God gave me favor in the midst of that dormitory with 82 men and he gave me favor with different deputies that ran those dorms. There was a deputy by the name of David Scow, I'll never forget him. He's my brother in Christ. This gentleman, God gave me so much favor with this man. He would wake me up when he got there, because he had the overnight shift, and he would call me over to his desk, and he would be like, what are you teaching on tomorrow so I can print out all the material I can off this computer for your teaching? Favor. He'd be like, just out of curiosity, Mr. Oquendo, what do you like to eat? So why are you asking that question? He said, just tell me the, the answer to the question. I said, well, you know what? I love me some Chinese food. I love me some KFC. There's some good things that I don't need in this place that I would love to sink my teeth in. A couple of nights later, everybody's sleeping. Mr. Aguendo, go to the timeout room. There was a timeout room where they sent people that didn't know how to behave so well. So I'm like, Deputy Scott, why do you want me to go to the timeout room? He says, just go to the timeout room. Okay, so I go to the timeout room. When I go in there and turn the corner and close the door behind me, there's Chinese food. <laughs> On different days, there was buckets of original recipe chicken. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Deputy Scout would come in while I was sinking my teeth and getting all greasy, and he'd be like, Mr. Okundo. Is there anyone that you would like to call on the telephone? I'd be like, Deputy Scow, I can't do that. He'd be like, listen, you, my friend, have the favor of God. God makes a way 
where there seems to be no way to bless those that are obedient to his word. Deputy Scott, one day, he, he started observing my walk in prison. And in prison, I had a very fine-tuned walk because before going to prison, my, my, my biggest battles were probably women and marijuana. And in prison, there's no women and there's no marijuana. So I was doing really well in my Christ walk offering. <laughs> but I knew that there was going to come a day where I was going to get released. So I had to prepare, why? Because when preparation meets with opportunity, it equals success. So how did I prepare? Praying, fasting, and reading the word. This man started seeing my fasting. He started observing. And the point of what I'm about to say is you have to learn to see God's blessing and enjoy the right now. Not the tomorrow, not the yesterday, but the right now. So Deputy Scout asked me, Mr. Oquendo, why do you fast so much? And I thought about that for a minute. And I said, you know, Deputy Scout, I think it's because, like Moses, I want to have a burning bush experience. <laughs> like the big Christian monsters in the word, I want to have an ooh, ah experience with God. And he says, Mr. Oquendo, I am appalled by your response. And I said, excuse me? What do you mean? He says, I've been serving the Lord for 40 years of my life. He says, and I've never had the privilege of walking somebody into the salvation prayer to become a Christian. He says, I come here four days one week and three days another week to do my job and I see men sit at your table and they give their life to Jesus Christ in the midst of the prison system. Ooh! Ah! He says, there's a gentleman on that bunk over there last name Kelly. I'm going to show you some pictures of him. He was here when he was 18. He was here again when he was 21. He was here again when he was 23. He was here again when he was 30. He was here again when he was 35. He spends his life living in this place. And reality is that your word, the word of God that comes out of your mouth, it puts that man in a position to want to sit at a table and listen to the word of God on a regular basis and change his life. Ooh! Ah! He says, Mr. Oquendo, while you're fasting and praying, looking for God to give you ooh ah experiences, you're missing the ooh ah experiences right before your eyes. Stop putting your focus on a tomorrow that is not guaranteed for you and put your focus on a God that's very much involved in your today. Ooh. Ah. Proverbs 13, 20. Man, I feel the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's such a privilege. Yes. Like if you knew what the privilege of feeling the Holy Spirit is, listen, nobody would be able to shut your mouth. Nobody yes. would be able to stop your prayer. Nobody would be able to stop you from getting into the Word. Nobody would stop your sacrifice because this feeling of the Holy Spirit is so good. It's so strong. It's so aggressive. It consumes you and it changes your life. Proverbs 13 20. It says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise. But a companion of fools shall be destroyed and suffers harm. We have the power 
of yes and the power of no. Listen, I say it all the time and people laugh, but I'm dead serious. If that beautiful woman that I call mom, who's been serving God for 45 years, starts acting a fool and cutting up against God, I will cut her out of my life. I will cut my mother out of my life. Why? Because if you are the companion of the wise, you're going to be wise. Amen. But if you are the companion of a fool, don't ask yourself why your life is going downhill. Amen. Don't ask yourself why trials and tribulations are consuming you. Don't ask yourself why you're never happy regardless to what you obtain. Don't ask yourself why there's an empty void inside of you that can't be filled and you have a decent life. Don't ask yourself why misery continues to knock on the door. If you are accompanied by fools, I got news for you. You yourself are going to be labeled a fool and your life will be destroyed by the devil. My friend since I was a kid, pastor. But your friend is on his way to hell and you're about to buy a ticket with him. Yes. But that's my brother and I love him so much. But your brother is a dirty devil who doesn't respect God, who doesn't respect women, who doesn't respect his family, who's very, very selfish, and you are going to land yourself a nice spot in a lake of burning fire if you continue to have fellowship and relationship with that dirty brother. It doesn't matter who it is. If they have the ability to compromise your spot in heaven, they need to be cut. They need to be cut. Why? Because the Bible says a friendship with the world is an enemy of God. Get your mind right, church. Nothing else matters means something. Nothing else matters means something. It's not just a catchphrase because it sounds good. It's not just a good, a good way to say and put a few words together because no other church is saying it. Listen, heaven is the goal and nothing else matters. I'm not letting nobody jeopardize my narrow path walk to heaven. The mind is like a treasure chest. Filled with memories, ideas, and emotions. Don't let those memories or ideas or emotions lead you astray from the narrow path. The mind is like a library, storing information and experiences. If those store, if, if, if those information and experiences bring you to a bad place, delete files. Delete files. Some people go to reminiscing and they start crying. Some people go to thinking about their past and somebody that they lost or a relationship that they wanted to work so bad and it just didn't work. And they go to getting emotional and breaking down. It's not the will of God for your mind. That's not the will of God for your heart. Amen. God wants you meditating on things that are good. And pleasing to him. And those things, my brothers and sisters in Christ, are in the word of God. Yes, I the mind is as a garden needing cultivation and care to flourish. Your mind will start thinking some crazy things if you don't direct your mind and cultivate your mind and care for your mind to allow it to flourish spiritually. Your mind can be your best friend, but your mind can be your worst enemy. Amen. Check yourself, church. Get your mind right. Your mind is as a filing cabinet, organizing thoughts and beliefs. What thoughts and beliefs have you stored in your mind that are troubling you at night? What thoughts and beliefs have you stored in your mind that lead you astray from the word of God? Oh, 
Holy Bible is full of scriptures that will replace anything that you've stored up there that shouldn't be in there. Begin to read the word and not just read it. Meditate on what you need because it has something for every arena of your life that there's a need. I promise you, the book is timeless. The book is alive. The book is Jesus Christ on paper. The mind is a house. It's like a house with different rooms representing different mental states. You walk into different rooms depending on what month it is, depending on what holiday it is, depending on what date it is, and you allow those rooms that you walk into in your mind to consume your emotions and to put you in a place of fear, to put you in a place of doubt, to put you in a place of hurt, to put you in a place of disbelief. God is saying, do some spring cleaning now that April is coming in your mind and empty out all those rooms and begin to buy new furniture called Genesis, Exodus, Deuteronomy, Psalms, Proverbs, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Begin to fill the rooms in your mind with the furniture of the scripture of the word of God. Why? Why is that important? Because James chapter 1 verse 8 says that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. When you are not consistent with meditating on that word day and night, you're going to have some good days. You're going to have some bad days. You're going to be unstable in your decision making. The people closest to you are not going to be able to rely on you or depend on you because you're flaky in your decision making. They can't trust the words that come out of your mouth. I want to be the type of man that if I say this is going to happen at this time on this day, you can cash that check because you know that your pastor is a man of integrity. We have to be those types of Christians. Jesus Christ was a man that meant every word that came out of his mouth. He didn't say something just for fun. He didn't say something just because. He was strategic in his speech because he wanted to make sure that everyone that heard his words knew what he was about, knew what he stood for, knew who his father was, and knew exactly what his mission on this earth was. Are you giving that example at the workplace? Does everybody in your life and those that meet you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're in love with Jesus Christ? If they don't, they should. Because, you know, sometimes you get in a relationship and and you start falling in love and getting all these emotions and all of a sudden your office at work begins to get decorated with pictures of the person that you have all these feelings for and everybody without knowing the person knows that you're in love with the person because of the way that you're representing and decorating your office at work. In the same manner, everyone should know that you are representing and decorating your life with the Father, with the Son, and with the Holy Spirit of God because you are a Bible-based believer. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. The mind is as a vast ocean, deep and unexplored with hidden depths. Be careful what you put into your mind. Be careful what you're seeing, what you're listening to, where you're going, and who is getting your time. Matthew 22, 37 says, Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. to surrender your mind to Jesus Christ. The mind is as a river flowing with thoughts and emotions. 
It has a flame capable of illuminating and destroying. The mind is as a mirror reflecting our experiences and beliefs. 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. You have the ability to take every thought that enters your mind and put a grip on that thought and bring it to your mouth and speak to it. You are a thought from the devil and I am casting you in the name of Jesus to the pit of hell where you belong. Learn to use the weapons of mass destruction that have been given you. It's in the word. 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 Pastor, why do you keep repeating yourself? Because you need to get the message that everything that you need, that everything that you desire, that everything that's going to bring you from where you are now to a narrow path that leads directly to heaven, it's in the word. It's in the word. It's in the word. It's in the word. mind is as a microscope bringing hidden details to light. It's as a compass guiding us through life's choices. It's as a paintbrush creating works of art and thoughts and ideas. It's as a chisel shaping our personality and beliefs. Do you have a disciplined mind? The Dalai Lama said a disciplined mind leads to happiness. How many of you are not very happy in your life? Maybe it's time to discipline your mind to obey and to fall in alignment with the word of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. result of retraining your mind to process life as it is rather than as you think it should be. A lot of us get hurt and a lot of us get broken because we believe that life should be a certain way and it's not. Process life as it is and label it red if it's red, black if it's black, white if it's white. But then, take the power of choice, take the power of yes, take the power of no, and create your destiny because the choices that you make today and the seeds that you plant in your todays are going to produce the fruit and harvest of your tomorrows. Create your destiny, church. I know what I'm going to have in my tomorrows 10 years from now if Jesus Christ hasn't come. You know what that is? Jesus. You know what that is? Holy Bible. You know what that is? Prayer. You know what that is? Sacrifice. You know what that is? Promises of the word manifesting. Why? How do you know that? Because I'm making decisions in my todays. I'm planting seeds in my todays that are based on the word of God, that are based on prayers, that are based on sacrificial fasting, that are based on spiritual disciplines that literally put me in a place to receive from God what I want from God, his promises. Yes, hallelujah. The Holy Spirit, he does what he wants. Amen. And I know some have heard this quick little testimony before, but I'm going to share it again for those newcomers in the house. The Holy Spirit, I'm not, I'm not into watching uh, spiritual scary movies. Demons and demonic forces. and I don't want that junk in my house. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I had an experience as a kid with the Exorcist movie, and I'm all set. I'm good. But one day I'm, I'm going through Amazon Prime and I'm flicking to see a movie. I don't know if you ever heard of the movie Smile. Very demonic face with a smile on it is the cover. It looks freaky. I seen it and I was like, I'm good. Click, click, 
click, and the Holy Spirit said, go back. And I'm like, huh? So I go back. I press play. And I start watching the movie. In this movie, a demon would get inside of somebody and possess them. And then it would go to another individual that it desired to possess, and the person that was possessed would commit suicide in front of that person, and the demon would jump in them. And I was like, that wasn't the Holy Spirit that instructed me to watch this. This is disturbing. I'm shutting it off. And I shut it off. The next day, I turn on the television, and the first thing I see is, smile. I'm like, no, I'm not going to smile at this. I'm going to click away. So I begin to click away, and the Holy Spirit says, go back. And I'm like, this is disturbing, Holy Spirit. Like, what are you doing? So I began to watch the movie some more. This time, I was strategic. It was daytime. So I could deal with it a little better. I didn't have to go to bed anytime soon. I could pray for a while and get this funkiness off of me, right? So I started watching. As the movie came near an end, the demon ran into somebody who was challenging to get into. The person that was challenging for the demon to get into says to the demon, why are you tormenting me? Why? Like, why are you doing this? Just leave me alone. Like, why? Why are you tormenting me? And I'll never forget the demon's response. The demon says to the individual, because your mind is so inviting. Holy Spirit said, shut it off. A lot of times in your life, you are going to be tormented by demonic forces that will never leave you alone, not because they have power over you, but because your mind is so inviting and welcoming. They feel comfortable in the mind, in your head. Close with this. Philippians 4, verse 8. It says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. <coughs> you have the ability to get your mind right and let the voices in your mind constantly and always be the word of God and the voice of God. Let's stop putting blame on this person, on that person, on the past, on the hood that you grew up in, on the situation that broke you. Listen, I'm sorry life was rough for some of you, but I understand I can sympathize as well as empathize. Been there. Done that. But you have total control of what the rest of your life is going to look like depending on what you put in your heart. What are you putting into your heart? I want Jesus. what's been in your heart has not been Jesus all day and all night
meditating on it all the day long. If that's not your story and you want that to change, the altar's open. Let us pray with you. Let us teach you how to get your mind right with Jesus Christ. That's today's message, church. God bless you.